You're watching the Infinix Note 11 Pro disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First system tray needs to be removed. Next, we need to apply heat to the back plate with a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the plastic back plate. There's some foam padding in the center and some graphite film on top, which helps transfer heat. There are 16 Phillips screws that need to be removed. Now the camera lens cover and bezel need to be pried off. Once that's removed, there are three more Phillips screws which need to be removed. Next, we need to place a plastic pry tool in between the back housing and the front of the screen and run it along the edges to pop off the catches. Once the back housing is loose from the frame, we're going to slightly lift it up and push it towards the top so it can disconnect the battery cable and the flex cable for the fingerprint reader. The back housing is also made of plastic. The LED flash board is located here and there are numerous antenna flex cables around the back housing. Now the graphite film on the shield needs to be peeled off. And then we can proceed to disconnect the flex cables. There's a coaxial cable on the right side of the board that needs to be disconnected by popping it off. At this point, there are two Phillips screws which are holding on the main board that need to be removed. There's a plastic cover on the top that needs to be lifted up. And then the main board could be lifted up and removed. There's a 64 megapixel main camera, a 13 megapixel telephoto lens, and a 2 megapixel bokeh lens. None of the camera have OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a liquid damage indicator sticker, which is this white sticker, and the color remained white, indicating there's no liquid damage meaning no water got inside the phone during our durability test. There are also rubber gaskets around these connectors. The camera connectors are located on the back and they can be disconnected by just popping them off. The front facing camera is located in the top center and the memory card or SIM reader is located on the back as well. There's a secondary microphone on the top underneath the shield, a proximity sensor and a dual LED front facing flash. There's copper tape over the shield and thermal paste over these. Once the removable shields are removed, and the copper tape is peeled off. We can see more thermal paste on these chips, as well as the RAM. And there's also a thermal pad which goes over the processor. To remove the battery, there are two adhesive pull tabs on the bottom of the battery to help pry the battery off. Those are pretty useless, they tear immediately. So we're gonna have to use some isopropyl alcohol and get some around the edges of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 5000 mAh battery. Once the battery is removed, we can see this flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard, and the flex cable for the screen which is routed to an opening in the midframe. So if you need to replace the screen, you would have to remove the back plate, remove the screws on the back housing and remove the back housing itself, disconnect the battery cable and the screen cable, pry off the battery, giving you access to the screen cable, and then you peel off the screen cable from the midframe, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry old screen off, apply a new adhesive, and reapply your new screen, making sure you run the cable for the screen back to the midframe and reassemble your phone. There are two Phillips screws which are holding down the speaker assembly that need to be removed. Now the speaker assembly can be lifted up and removed. There's some graphene film to help transfer heat. And here's the speaker itself. Now the flex cable needs to be disconnected and the other end of the coaxial cable. There's a single Phillips screw holding the subboard down that needs to be removed. Now we can lift up and remove the subboard. 
There's a rubber gasket on the charger port and headphone jack, as well as the primary microphone. And there's another liquid damage indicator, which is white sticker. And that sticker also remains white, indicating there's no liquid damage or no water got inside the phone. Here's a look at the other side. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner and it's held down with adhesive. There's also a rubber gasket covering the hole where the semi ejector tool goes in. The flex cable for the volume keys and power button is located on this side and it's held down with adhesive. So if you need to replace that, you just have to pry it off. The earpiece speaker is located on top and that's also held down with some adhesive. And there's some sort of 3D layer of graphene or graphite, which is in between the mid frame and the screen to help transfer heat. For the repairability score, I give this phone a 4.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply your backplate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.